Okay, let's take a look at some other ways of evaluating limits using some algebra. Uh, last day we saw that the substitution method helped to evaluate many limits. But it didn't always work. Um, and there are some other techniques. So let's take a look at some of those. However, there are other algebraic methods to help with some limits. as x approaches c of f of x, where f of c is not defined. So we're going to get an additional tool that will allow us to solve some additional limits that we couldn't use the substitution method for because the substitution method required us to have defined functions at x is equal to c. Let's start with an example on this. Take a look at the limit as x approaches 4 of this function. Now, you'll notice that the denominator is not defined at x is equal to 4. So there's a bit of a problem with this one. We can use some algebra, though, to help us out. So although uh, this is undefined uh, at x equals 4, because the denominator would be equal to 0, we can do a little trick, which is we can factor the numerator. And let's take a look and see what happens. So when we factor the numerator, we get uh, well, we've got x minus 4 on the denominator. And the numerator turns out to also have a factor of x minus 4 in it. And if I apply a little bit of a cancellation technique, I end up with a much simpler function. And I can now use the substitution method because it will work for the polynomial 2x plus 1. This works, this method, because x minus 4, that factor, is removable. And the discontinuity that happens when x is equal to 4 is called a removable discontinuity. So if we've got certain kinds of removable discontinuity going on, we can make the limit function actually work by doing factorization. And this form where I have this piece 2x plus 1, this 2x plus 1 is an indeterminate form. What that means is it is the factored form isn't exactly the same as the original thing that we were trying to figure out, but it is essentially equivalent. And that idea of being essentially equivalent is called the indeterminate form. It turns out we can actually do this for quite a few functions. Um, any function, f of x, 
when evaluated at x equals c has f equals c produce an expression of the form of any of these forms, actually. Uh, 0 divided by 0, so when you do the substitution, if the numerator and denominator are both 0, if the numerator is infinity and the denominator is infinity, if uh, you have multiplication and you multiply infinity times 0, or if you have two functions <coughs> and you end up having infinity minus infinity, um, any of these we can try at least to transform into an indeterminate form. And solve it from the indeterminate form. For example, let's take a look at the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of tan x over secant x. So here's the graphs of tan x and secant x and tan x, this red line, as you approach pi over 2 becomes infinity. So the limit as you approach from the left is infinity. As you approach from the right it's also negative infinity. Uh, for the secant graph as you approach from the right it's infinity and from the left is also negative infinity. So we have an infinite discontinuity happening, happening here at pi is equal to uh, sorry, at x is equal to pi over 2. So from the graphs, we can see that this function has the form uh, infinity over infinity. As you get closer and closer to pi over 2 with the tan graph and pi over 2 with the secant graph, you get closer and closer to the form of an infinite function over an infinite function. Therefore, we should be able to use some algebra to come to an indeterminate form that will help us solve this. And the algebra is using some of the definitions of tan and secant. So tan is the same as sine over cos, and secant is the same as 1 over cos, and that can be simplified to the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of just sine x. Now I can do the substitution, and when evaluated at pi over 2, sine x is equal to 1. Okay, let's take a look at another example. The limit as x approaches 9 of root x minus 3 over x minus 9. And you'll notice that this is of the form 0 over 0. As you substitute in 9 for x, you get 3 minus 3. And as you substitute 9 for x on the denominator, you get 9 minus 9. So we should be able to use an algebraic approach. Keeping the main part of the question, we have to keep writing this part down. I know it's tempting to take some shortcuts, but we have to keep writing this down. Otherwise, we don't know that we're continuously taking a limit of this uh, chunk of algebra. We do a little trick called multiplying by the conjugate. So. I know that you've probably seen this before in rationalizing denominators, but what we're actually going to do is take our original function, multiply it by the conjugate of the numerator, so root x plus 3 over root x plus 3, and use that as a trick to help us simplify things. So as a numerator, I get root x times root x, which is x, plus 3 to root x and minus 3 root x cancel each other out, and minus 3 times positive 3 is x minus 9. Don't factor out the denominator, or expand, sorry, the denominator. Leave it as it is. You'll then notice that these cancel, providing us with the limit as x approaches 9 of 1 over the square root of x plus 3, which will work. 
when I substitute in, I get 3 plus 3, and I get a solution, 1 over 9. Here's an example of the form infinity minus infinity. So the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x squared minus 1. And again, the form is infinity minus infinity. This first part, when you substitute in, you get a 0 in the denominator. So 1 over 0 is considered infinity. And you have a 0 in the denominator here. So you get that form. So we should use some algebra. We should be able to use some algebra. And it looks like this. You have fractions. You can make common denominators with these fractions. You need to change the first one to x plus 1 over x squared minus 1, and then subtract away the second one. Common denominator approach gives you x plus 1 minus 2 on the numerator, which is x minus 1, and x squared minus 1 on the denominator. The denominator can now be factored. And cancelled. And now we can use substitution. 1 goes in, and I get a limit of 1 half. So those forms, uh, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, infinity times 0, infinity minus infinity, are great forms. However, unfortunately, they do not always have indeterminant form that works. Sorry. <laughs>